So I love making games with large numbers of dynamic entities, and one of the types of games that I've always wanted to create is a zombie horde mode where you fight off waves and waves of zombies that are trying to chase after you to eat your brains. So in today's video, I'm going to be creating that exact type of game using Unity's data-oriented technology stack and their entity component system, but I'm not going to be doing it alone. I'm going to be using a bunch of assets off of the Unity Asset Store, which conveniently are all on sale as part of Unity's massive Black Friday and Cyber Week sale going on right now. now. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about this sale throughout the duration of this video, but if you do want a sneak peek on some of the deals, you can check out the links in the description below. And thank you to the Unity Asset Store for sponsoring today's video. So first things first, if you want to create a good game, you're going to need to do some research to see what's out there. Now, luckily enough for me, Call of Duty recently released Black Ops 6, which has a really nice zombie mode in it. So I was able to do a little bit of research for this project. Okay, I, a lot of research, like like a lot of uh, research, you know, like at, at all hours of the day type research, even when I was exercising research, just, you know, as much research as I could possibly do and really just making sure that I'm taking good notes along the way to, you know, really as, get as much value out of this research as possible. But anyways, once you're done with the research and it's time to start development, Actually, you know what, let me just do one more round of research real quick. Okay, but after that, seriously, let's get into this and actually start on development. I think the first part of a, developing a game like this is want to have a good, solid character controller. Now, luckily enough for me, Unity has an ECS-based character controller available to you right through the package manager available in your regular Unity 6 installation. Interestingly enough, this character controller was actually originally an asset store package available for purchase. However, that asset got acquired by Unity and now it's just built in and available to everybody for free, which is really nice. And it's super easy to set up. There's first person and third person options, so I was able to drag in the first person character controller prefab, add a little gun to it from the Cinti Studios asset packs, and just get up and running with a first person character controller relatively quickly. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is have something for our character to do. Of course, in this game, we're going to be fighting off hordes and hordes of zombies. So let's get a bunch of those zombies into the game. Now, for a game like this, the idea is we wanna have a whole bunch of zombies spawn throughout the world, and they're all going to basically chase the player. They're gonna follow the player. So they're gonna to need to do some pathfinding throughout the world to find our player. Now, in this case, we want to have large numbers of these zombies just to make it you know, much more fun and interesting. So the best way to kind of go about doing this where we have a lot of large numbers of zombies all pathfinding their way to one position, AKA where the player is, a really fast and efficient way that we can do that is by using flow field pathfinding, which does exactly that. It basically creates a grid across the entire game map and tells zombies anywhere in the map where they need to go to basically find their way to the player and avoid obstacles along the way. Now, I would recommend that everyone actually go through the exercise of creating one of these flow fields by themselves to kind of you know learn what goes into them because it is a good algorithm to know. However, in this case, I want to get something up and running as fast as possible. So a great out of the box solution for that is the Agents Navigation Crowd Package. Now, this is an expansion off of the Agents Navigation base package, which is also required if you want to use this asset. And it is very easy to set up and it's compatible with both ECS as well as regular game object-based projects. And it has really good performance. It's also extremely well documented and very easy to extend off of in my experience. Now, both these asset packs, the Agents Navigation base as well as the Crowds expansion are both available as part of Unity's Black Friday and Cyber Week sale, which is going on right now. And there's over 650 other assets that are also part of the sale, all available at 50% off or more, which is really exciting. So again, you can go check those out using the links in the description below. So anyways, needless to say, I was able to get up and running with these zombies chasing the player relatively quickly. Now, right now they're just kind of running around in T-pose, which of course looks a little bit silly for this kind of portion of the demo. And so we want to get some proper animations involved. Now, one of the issues with this, as many people may be aware, is that Unity does not provide any ECS or DOTS compatible animation solutions right out of the box. They are currently working on one, but that is still a ways away. So as of right now, we have to rely on a third party assets in order to get good looking animations in our ECS based project. Now, luckily there is another asset on sale as part of the Black Friday sale right now, which is the Rukonka ECS animation system. Now this asset is really great because it allows you to play animations on ECS based entities, 
but it also uses a lot of Unity's built-in tools for you to set up those animations. So you use the same animator controllers and flow graphs that you would in just using Unity's regular animation solution. So if you're familiar with that, then you're gonna be pretty familiar with getting yourself up and running with the Rukonka ECS animation system. And so not only can we have just, you know, like a simple walk cycle that we just throw onto this, but we can also set up any of the regular animation parameters that we might normally set up. So we can have maybe some triggers for it to actually start playing the attack animations. And then after that, you know, it'll start playing just the regular walk cycle animation after that. So you can see a little demo where I just kind of have a key set up where it just triggers the attack animation on all these zombie characters. So at this point, I'm super glad that I have animations working in the project. Now let's add a little bit of variety to them because we don't just want, you know, all these zombies walking around with the exact same walk cycle. You know, we want to have a little bit of variety within our project. So Proto Factor is one of the bigger publishers on the Unity Asset Store, and they have all different types of really great 3D models and animations. Um, so they actually do have a bunch of these animation packs and they have a zombie specific animation pack that has a bunch of really cool and funny zombie walk cycles and attack animations and just, you know, anything that you would want to just kind of, you know, apply to a zombie character within your game. And this zombie animation pack is actually part of a bigger animation pack that they offer that includes 23 of these different animation packs, which has over 2,300 animation clips in them. So a lot of great variety if you're looking for any humanoid based animations. And a really cool thing about this animation collection pack is that as of right now, the day this video goes live, the asset pack is available on a flash deal. Now, what is a flash deal you may ask? A flash deal is where the asset actually goes on sale for 70% off for a limited time. And then after that, it's gonna drop down to 60% off for a little while. And then once that time expires, then it's going to be at 50% off for the remainder of the sale. And Unity is constantly adding to these flash deals every single day. So make sure you check back in through the course of the sale so you can get some really steep discounts on some awesome assets. So anyways, back to the zombie pack, I was able to wire up a good variety of these animations and apply them to the zombies. So now they're all going to spawn with a random walk cycle. And again, we can have the different animations for you know attacking the player and when they actually receive damage when we get to that port. So speaking of, now's the time to actually add in some combat. So I'm gonna start with the player and for the player shooting its weapon, it's just going to be a simple ray cast just from the center of the camera, just direct out into the world. That's just kind of the easiest solution to come up with. Now, one thing that I always like to do with these you know type of ray cast based solutions where we don't actually like you know see anything happening within the world as a sanity check i always like to just add in kind of some debug lines into the world to make sure that the ray cast is going in the proper direction that i want it to so rather than just using unity's regular debug lines i like to use this asset called a line now a line is really great because it provides a lot more uh, variety and customizability off of the Unity's built-in debug lines. So there's more primitive shapes, and we could also change the thickness and how the different debug lines and gizmos appear in the world. But the one major selling point for me on this asset is that it is fully compatible with Unity's jobs and bursts. So if we're using any type of multi-threaded jobs or the burst compiler, we can still draw debug lines from those contexts, which you normally would not be able to do with the regular Unity's debug lines. So this is extremely helpful for me when I'm doing a lot of this type of stuff using dots and ECS. And then of course, we also wanna add in the zombie attacking the player. Now this is pretty easy to implement. I kinda of just did some you know, basic proximity-based and timer-based type solutions where when the zombie is close enough to the player, you know, it's just gonna kind of deal some attack and deal some damage. Again, it's all kind of timer based. So now that like the basics of combat are in place, we can like, you know, deal and receive damage, stuff like that. I definitely want to polish this up and just make it feel a lot more like a real FPS game. So I'm just gonna rapid fire through a couple things that I did to make this game a little bit better. And of course, all the assets that I mentioned here are 50% off as part of the big sale. So I use the epic tune effects to create this little muzzle flash when the player shoots the weapon. And then also have this tiny little reload animation that plays when the player uh, reloads their weapon, whether they press, press the reload key or they run out of ammo, it'll automatically reload for them. Um, I was actually able to use some cubic easing functions to basically just 
animate the magazine going down and up. And then I added some sound effects for reloading as well as some of the other sound effects in the game like taking and dealing damage as well as some of the zombie groans and just other kind of, you know, random sound effects in there. Um, actually got all these from the Universal Sound Effects Library which is a massive library of 7,000 audio clips that um, were available to use. And you might think, you know, 7,000, that's like an overwhelming number of uh, things to go through. But luckily it's all split out into folders really nicely so I was able to find the things that I needed relatively easily. Then I wanted to add in some just regular other HUD elements that you might find in a first person shooter so there's you know hit markers when you successfully hit a zombie, um, some damage directional indicators to give the player a little bit of information about you know where attacks are coming from that maybe they might not see and then when you're low on health then I have this kind of like blood splatter effect that has kind of like a heartbeat sound effect going with it and it get, kind of gets like a real intense feeling. Um, but then I yeah, just kind of wanted to tie everything together, have a nice background track in there. So I um, have this track called Electric Deathmatch, which I got from the Game Music Treasury asset, which is another massive collection of 550 background tracks that you can play for various moods and genres. Um, there's a lot of really good stuff in there. So at this point, kind of everything that I need for the first person shooter is kind of set up as far as, you know, again, the main uh, interactions and everything like that but we're still just kind of in this little test environment. So, you know, let's actually go to some kind of more interesting place. So for the environments, I actually chose this demo scene, which is part of the Polygon Apocalypse pack from Cinti Studios. Um, they have a lot of really great low poly assets. And this is actually where the zombie models came from as well. And just the demo scene that they had was a really great base to go off of. Of course, I made a little bit of adjustments here and there to you know, create a couple different zones for the player to basically maneuver through. So the idea here is the map is kind of broken up into a couple different sections. And then you fight off the enemies in the first area, kind of the trailer park area. And then you move over to the more suburban city area and you fight off a bunch of zombies through there. And then finally you go to to the last portion where there's a big all-out battle with a bunch of zombies in the motel parking lot. And so anyways, that's a little story about how I created this fun zombie horde mode, which I'm calling Call of Dots Zombies. And it is available right now if you do want to play it over on itch.io. There should be a link to that down in the description as well. And then once again, thank you very much to the Unity Asset Store for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you go check out the Black Friday sale. Of course, all the assets that I mentioned here are going to have links in the description where you can go check them out and again be sure to keep checking back for those flash deals where you can again get some really steep discounts on some awesome assets so anyways hope you all enjoyed today's video hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one